Any NBA fan below 6 feet tall can attest that watching Nate Robinson get KO'd in the past month hurt our soul. Nate was the guy we looked up to. He stood fearless at the so-called physical requirements to play in the NBA and just laughed. So to see him get slumped by a YouTube vlogger hurt very badly. I, at a respectable 4 foot 6 inches tall, took it especially hard. With Isaiah Thomas's play regressing and Nate now irredeemable, there needs to be another short player in the NBA to carry the torch. Enter Argentinian god Facundo Campazzo, known to many as just Facu. My new favorite player in the NBA, and I know what you're thinking. You didn't have any idea who this was two weeks ago. No I didn't, but that's beside the point, move along. Now Nate Robinson and IT are both 5'9", while Faku is to some sources 5'10", to other sources 5'11", to Wikipedia 5'11 and a quarter. But playing in the NBA below 6 foot is still all the same damn impressive. And one source said, and I didn't fact check this because I'm lazy so let's just roll with it, that Faku is the shortest player ever in the NBA to not go to college. Faku has a pretty cool story after going undrafted in the 2013 NBA draft. He notched a pretty impressive career in Spain becoming a 3 time Spanish league champ, a 2 time Euroleague champ, and a Spanish league finals MVP for clubs like Real Madrid and Murcia. After Faku signed with the Nuggets, Luca recently stated that he was very excited for his success, his recent success, and will be rooting for him at every step of the way in the NBA level, except when they play against each other because, as Luca said, Faku's a pain in the ass to defend. And I know this is a family channel, those were Luca's words, those weren't mine. Faku's nickname is The Magician. And it's not a secret that there is little to nothing cool about modern day magic. There just isn't folks, but not with Faku, because the magic that he does on the court may as well be the coolest damn thing on the planet. That's really what he did so well in Spain, he just made magic. His vision, despite being a little bit undersized, is up there with probably any passer in the world. You thought LaMelo Ball was an electric passer? Don't get me wrong, he still is. Triple B's! But I encourage you to turn on some Facundo Campazzo highlights and be even more amazed. He's got a little Patrick Mahomes in him. His athleticism combined with solid handles and creativity helps him to either find the open man or score, whether it be at the rim or a jumper, despite on certain plays it looking like there's no option available. He just has this creative gel about him that he played for with the teams in Spain. He's a spark plug with great energy, great team chemistry, who looks to just be having a damn good time when he plays basketball. He's especially good in the pick and roll, and it is obvious with his body language on the court that he loves what he does. In the EuroLeague, he averaged 8.3 points per game to go along with 5.3 assists, 2.3 boards, and 1.4 steals. In league play in Spain, keeping it domestic, he averaged 10.1 points per game with 4.5 assists and 2.3 boards. Now, he signed with the Denver Nuggets on November 20th, saying it is a dream and that he felt like a little kid again because he's reliving his dreams. Who cannot appreciate that? And since coming over, he has been a real treat to watch, especially in the preseason as, I mean, the regular season hasn't started, so only the preseason. Just look at this pass in a preseason game on the fast break. What the fuck is that? I mean, what the fuck is that? Where can I see more of that? He may have just found the most creative and efficient way for a pass to get from point A to point B. How many times have you seen an outlet pass on a fast break to a guy that just goes too far, leads the player out of bounds, no basket? This is revolutionary like Jan Hus. I haven't seen this much creativity from an Argentinian man since watching Marcelo Bielsa coach last week. Just an absolute stroke of genius. And this pass. I've never seen anything like this in an NBA game. I've never seen this motion in an NBA game. The only time I've ever even seen this motion was in Jackass the TV show when Johnny Knoxville and steve -O were pelted with oranges by highlight players. And it hurt like hell. The comparisons to Faku that I've seen made have been white chocolate, JJ Barea, I'd sprinkle in a dash of TJ McConnell, but I'd actually compare him to another player, and I mean this with the utmost respect to both players. That is the professor from the And One Streetball mixtapes. The creativity, the flashes, the excitement, the willingness to dish out and find the open man. The professor would make an amazing pass and you just go, how the hell did he do that? How the hell did he make that work? Faku does that at the professional level. I've seen him pass through the legs. I've seen him pass behind the back. He does it all. He's got great handles to go along with this game and he is fun to watch. But it can't be all smooth sailing for the Argentinian. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, folks. 
He has struggled consistently shooting the basketball, especially from the three-point line throughout his career. In Spanish league play, he has shot a career 35% from the three, while in EuroLeague play, he shot a career 34.3% from the three, a slight dip. However, his past two seasons in the EuroLeague, he shot 31% from the three and 27.5% from the three. Not good. Not good at all. You wonder if the dip from the Spanish League to the EuroLeague, a step up in competition to the EuroLeague, means that his three will continue to suffer as he takes another step up to the NBA level. He'll want to replicate the 2019-2020 season in the Spanish League where he shot 41% from the three. On the Nuggets, I will say if he does get some sort of consistent minutes, shooting 35% from the three would be a huge victory, while 40% would be euphoric, that would be pure nirvana, that would be fucking crack cocaine. I would say probably the betting odds say that he'll shoot probably in the low 30s for three, and it definitely doesn't help that he's a lower release point on his shot, and that may not go well in the bigger, faster, stronger, and just overall better defense that is the NBA. Defenders just might say, give me that shit, and they block a shot. The good news is, shooting-wise, is that he is a career 86.1% free throw shooter in the EuroLeague. Now, another potential weakness is on defense. A lot to do with his height, unfortunately, at 5'10 or 5'11, depending on who you believe. Maybe, just maybe, if he flexes really hard, he can grow a little bit more, just like a Chia Pet. But if not, he's just got to make do with what he has. Again, you wonder if the bigger, stronger, etc. NBA will be too much for him on defense. However, I will say in the preseason, he has shown a lot of promise. Even Jokic said he was impressed by his defense. I know it's just preseason and practice, but still, it's good signs early on. We'll certainly see as time goes on in this regular season how good he is defensively. And also, he's got very quick hands. He's going to get you steals regardless. That's just going to happen no matter what else he can do on defense. Now, the 2020 Denver Nuggets. A team Faku was interested in. Based on their Western Conference Finals run last year, of course you remember the great 3-1 comebacks, not once, not twice, but uh, twice. The team did lose Jeremy Grant, Torrey Craig, and Mason Plumlee, three great defenders, well, three very good defenders for the Nuggets last year, and added Jamichael Green. Now those three guys, as I said, were all three solid defenders, especially my boy Jeremy Grant. And Green, being just one person, can't make up for that entirely on his own. On paper, the Nuggets are still very strong defensively, but weaker than last year. Faku's playing time down the stretch may be decided by how good defensively he is, how good his defensive game adapts to the NBA. Right now, if you had a rotation consisting of Faku and MPJ in it, it would be amazing offensively, but on defense, it could be like a matador. Just saying ole and letting the offense right through the score. Now everyone, and rightfully so, has been talking about the potential pairing with him and Nikola Jokic, two of the most creative and skilled passers in the world who play completely different positions. If you're a fan of creative and clean assists, the Nuggets are your team to watch. Everyone says that Jokic's passing game was heavily influenced by his early water polo days and the popularity of water polo in his native Serbia. Faku's game reminds me of High Lion, and Jamal Murray's game reminds me of Cricket. And this is really a global nugget squad with a very unique culture. Bol Bol was born in Sudan, Jamal Murray, he's a Canadian, Faku from Argentina, Nikola Jokic from Serbia, Chanchar is from Slovenia, and Hartenstein is from Germany. He was born in America, but partially raised in Germany, so... He's, he's German. Now, a lot of questions are still to be answered by this Nuggets team, like how much better has MPJ gotten? How good is Bol Bol and where does he fit in the rotation? How good is Faku? Mike Malone seems to love him, saying if he ever gets depressed, he's going to turn on Faku highlights. A potential middle finger to Big Pharma. And Jamal Murray gave him a chest bump in practice. A very great sign. Minutes-wise, he'll come off the bench. And getting $3 million a year, that means they'll use him. I don't see him being higher than the 8th man on this very good Nuggets team, as Will Barton, Morris, and Green will all get precedent over him coming off the bench. He'll have to step up his game to get more minutes. And toughness overall has not been an issue for him. Persevering, not even a problem. In international play, despite his small size, he's gotten into a stare down with DeAndre Jordan. He blocked the late, great Kobe Bryant, although taking a second look, it looks like Manu fouled the shit out of him. And either way, I like this guy's energy. 
I like his spirit, and it is a shame that fans won't be there to welcome him to Denver to start the year, as they would love him. And weed is currently legal in the state of Colorado. All my cartography buffs know that Denver is located in the state of Colorado. It would be an ideal day for any smoker to rip a bowl, go to the Nuggets game, and watch this 5'10", 5'11", Argentinian man make passes many don't even think are possible. Passes you couldn't even comprehend, but we'll have to wait and see on that. And I wish him all the best. And I'm going to follow his career very close. He's going to be a very exciting player to watch. I expect a lot more NBA fans to know about him sooner rather than later. A quick shout out to Argentina. Shout out to Gonzalo Higuain. Please subscribe and like and whatever. And check out the website with some great articles. And I'll have a Falco scouting report up there momentarily. So check that out. It'll be up now. I mean, not momentarily. It will be live now. Thank you. Thank you all.